So let's get into it, y'all, and let's go into the Word of God. I want to invite your attention tonight um, to a passage of Scripture found in Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Let's get into the Word of God tonight. Psalm 139 is the passage of Scripture we want to look at, and we want to do this for just a few minutes. Again, thank you so much to everybody who's joining us. Please take a moment to share this with somebody. Let's get into it. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time to gather around your word. Now, Lord, as we come to do this, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will that you will speak to us even now and that we will have clarity of your word and that, God, your word will have free course and be glorified. And may you, O oh God, even now speak to us so that we can be your people in word and in deed. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, let's go. Psalm 139. I'm going to preach from this on Sunday, so I'm not going to do a uh, total exposition of this passage, but there is one verse that I want to pick up on. That's verse 14. Psalm 139 and verse 14. Um, it simply says this, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Sonia K. Holmes, hey girl, good to see you. Let's get it. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Here's the first hashtag of the night. I want you to put two hashtags, fill up the internet with it. Hashtag fearfully made, hashtag wonderfully made, hashtag fearfully made, hashtag wonderfully made. We're going to talk about this. I'm beginning a series of teachings and preaching tonight uh, that, that will be directed in this direction to talk about be proud. We have a whole lot of uh, persons and a whole, well, a whole lot of upheaval going on. A whole lot of change that's happening. Sonia, you know, I love you to death. I'm glad, I'm glad to have you as a colleague. Here's what, here's what we have to say. Pastor Roger Trotter, we're just getting started. Here's what we have to understand, that there's a lot of stuff going on. And it seems to me, Pastor Roger Trotter, that every time Michelle Price, somebody utters the word Black Lives Matter, someone would then turn around and counter that with All Lives Matter. And now you have a strange, thank you, thank you, Charlene. Somebody else need to hashtag it. Hashtag fearfully made, hashtag wonderfully made. We're going to talk about that for about 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, and so now what should be uh, working in concert and synchronism, synchronized with each other, what should be working in harmony with each other seems to be in opposition to each other. Because is it that Black Lives Matter, uh, Michelle Price? Or James Keith, is it that all my lives matter? And it seems that we stand in opposition with each other. Here's what I want to argue tonight and for the next little bit while we talk about these things on Thursday and Sunday and on Tuesday. Here's what we have to understand. The scripture says this. I'll get into it more Sunday morning. I praise you, the psalmist writes, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My argument is simply this, that whatever you are, Whoever you are, every part of your being was created by God, and you ought to be proud of who God has made you to be. Let me say it again. I don't know, I don't know if that came through, but that's the whole of my argument throughout the entire this series, this series, that whatever you are, whoever you are, God has made you, and you should be proud of who God has made you to be. Come on, somebody hashtag it, please. Hashtag fearfully made. Hashtag wonderfully made. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the, here's the entirety of our lesson tonight in a nutshell. I'll get into this psalm more on Sunday morning. But for tonight, here's what the psalmist does. As he starts to talk about in Psalm verse 13, for you formed my inward parts. I'll talk about this Sunday, but you knitted me together in my mother's womb. Then he said, and I praise you. He gets excited. Listen, he gets excited about who he is. I need you and I to get excited about who God has made you to be. Yes, you. Yeah, you with the big eyes, you with the big lips, you with the pale skin, you with the dark skin, you with the big hands, you with the small hands, you, come on y'all, with the small breasts, you with the big breasts, you with the little hips, you with the big hips, you who is real tall and you who is real small, who real short. Every last one of them, watch what he says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. You formed my inward parts. Roger Trotter, watch what he says, and his response. Response to that is, and I praise you. Yeah. All right. 
All right, listen, listen. He says, this psalmist says, I want you to hear me that I praise you, God, because you put me together. Now watch what he says, because he's using some words here that's important. If you have dark skin, yeah, you matter. You know why? Because you were created like that. Roger Trotter, this is not a deep message. Sonia K. Holmes, this is not a deep message. James Keith, this is not a deep message. I need y'all to share this because somebody will be blessed. But Mary Mac Williams, get everybody from United on here right now. Here's the reality. Whatever you are, whatever you look like, I'm short. I always joke about this. I'm short, bald, one eye, bird chest, barely even got a, got a body at all. Here's what you have to understand. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's break it down real quickly, Chris Rose, and let's understand it. Watch what he says in this passage. It's important. If you understand the words he uses here, then we will then walk away from this, beginning to understand, ah, I'm a black man and I matter. Ha, ah, I'm a white man and I matter. Mm, I'm an Indian and I matter. Come on, y'all. I'm heterosexual and I matter. Mm, I'm homosexual and I matter. That whatever you are, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Watch this. That word fearfully in Hebrew is a word, literally, Pastor Trotter, that means that I'm made in honor. Watch what it also means. It means I'm made to be honored. I need somebody to hear me. That I'm made in honor. That I'm made to be honored. Let's say it one more time. It means I am made in honor. And it means I am made to be honored. Why is this significant? Because too many times as I'm writing this, this, this paper right now that I'm having to look at and all these resources, there are too many of us that, that are psychologically damaged. We are emotionally wounded because we don't like something about ourselves. I am a testament to that. I need y'all to share this right now. I am a testament to that. And, 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 and I grew up because I'm blind in one eye and I'm not very tall and I'm not very big and I'm not very strong. And you can look at all of your deficiencies and your deficiencies can be taken that way and they begin to define you. Who am I talking to right now? Sonia K. Holmes, who am I talking to right now? I should have talked to you and you and Janice King more about this so, so y'all can set me on the right path as, as far as social, socially. But here's what you have to understand. Ladies and gentlemen, that the problem is our deficiencies begin to define us because our deficiencies become so big in our eyes, David Boone, that they become the sum total of our definition. This psalmist said, when I was in my mother's womb, God knit me together. Mm, mm, mm. Which means that it was by design, y'all hear me, that God made me and what God made, listen to me, because this is the implication of the text, is a vessel of honor. <laughs> my one eye is a vessel of honor. My dark skin is a vessel of honor. My manhood is a vessel of honor. Your womanhood is a vessel of honor. You were made in honor. Now, there is something underneath this that I cannot run past. Pastor Roger Trotter, Michelle Price, I need somebody to give me some hearts and light so I know y'all out there, this thing is good to me. Because, ladies and gentlemen, when we understand this, we'll stop pitting black lives against white lives. We'll stop pitting white lives against black lives. And we'll understand that every one of us, whatever we were made to be, we were made to be honored. Now, what does this have to do with anything? Because what he says here in the undertone is, David Boone, you were made, imago day, fancy term, imago day, in the image of God. That the reason you are made with honor is because you were created in the image of God. That literally, are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? That literally you, yes, you, yes, you, you ought to get a mirror out right now. You ought to get a mirror out right now. And you ought to begin to look at yourself, not in some arrogance, not with some conceited ideology, but you ought to look at yourself and recognize that when you're looking at yourself, whatever you look like, if you don't have a two teeth in your head and you got a scar across your forehead, literally, ladies and gentlemen, you are made in the image of God. There's a glory and there's an honor that comes, comes along with this. Psalm, Psalm 8, it simply says this, what, what is man? 
that thou art mindful of him, of the son of man, that thou created him, for you crowned him with glory and honor and made them, that, that human, a little lower, the, the King James says, than angel. But the, but the Hebrew says, a little lower than God. So in the pecking order, David Boone, who Charlene, I, ooh, I wish this was as good to everybody else as it is to me. Charlene, in the pecking order of creative order, God says, the reason you are fearfully made is because you were made with honor. So here's God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And then the angels are not between you and God. It's God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and then us. Okay, did y'all hear what I just, ah, oh, Roger Trotter. Here's what he said. It's God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and then it's us. Somebody should be sharing this right now. It's Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and then it's us. That there is nothing above the human being. There's no animal. There's, there's, no, there's no principle. There's no power. There's no principality. The devil ain't above you. You were made in the image of God, okay, watch this. So you were made to be honored. I say one more thing. I say one more thing. I move to this last piece, and then I'll be done because because my time is almost up. Here's what we have to understand. And so the only way that we can be dishonored is when we don't understand that we are vessels to be honored. Watch what the psalmist said. He said, "I praise you because I am fearful. I am made in honor, and I made." to be honored. But then watch what he said. He said, I am, I praise you, for I am fearfully made in honor, made to be honored. But Roger Trotter, then watch what he said. He says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm on the back end of this thing now. Come on. This is a good time to share it. I'm on the back end of it. Watch this. Sonia Holmes, I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Tyler Terran, I am wonderfully made. Watch this. This word simply means this, to put a difference, to show marvelous separation, to set apart. Now watch this. This is why this is so important to us today at this time in which we live. Yes, all of us were made in honor, but God didn't make all of us the same. <laughs> oh God, help me tonight, Jesus. God made all of us to be honored who we are is to be honored, but God didn't make all of us the same. Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about this? How boring would the world be? if everybody sounded alike? How boring would the world be if everyone looked alike? How boring would it be if there were just one color everywhere? If everything was black, if everything was white, if everything was, if, every, if everything was, 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 if there were no rainbows and there were no colors in the rainbow, if the, grass, if the grass was brown and then the sky was brown and then the buildings were brown and then the cars were brown and then the people were brown. Come on, y'all. God in God's creative genius said, no, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to wonderfully, oh, oh God, wonderfully make, which means this, you were created with differences and rather than your differences being deficiencies, it is your difference that sets you apart. Okay. Um, Charlene, it is not your deficiency. Your difference is not a deficiency. Rather, your difference is the thing that sets you apart. You can have, you can have two identical twins. You can have two identical twins. I have, I have, I have two nieces that are uh, Samaya and Samaria. They are identical. And let me be real honest with you, there are times when I can't tell them apart. However, her, their mother helped me to understand because there are subtle differences between the two. And the more I've been around them, the more I understand it's not just a physical thing, but there are personality differences. There are differences in the way they approach things. There are differences in their style. Watch what he says. And your difference is wonderful in the eyes of God. Am I coming through tonight? Please, somebody say something. Because somebody ought to hashtag it tonight. Hashtag, I am wonderful. Listen, I'm proud to be different. I'm proud to be different. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. Um, I didn't plan on saying this, but, but it's, it's really, 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 really powerful to me. So let me share it with us. Um, uh, Charlene, Dr. Zandwister Holmes Jr., at a time when I was trying to be like everybody else, because I started off, I would preach like Johnny Pack the Fourth, and I would preach like Leo Daniels, 
and I would preach like um, Jasper Williams, and I would preach, I would preach like um, 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 uh, E.V. Hill, and I would preach like C.A.W. Clark, and I, would pre- and I was preaching like all these different people. And then I came across Martin Luther King Jr. and God the Taylor, and I was trying to do like all these people. Listen what Dr. Holmes taught me. He said, you will never be the preacher you were meant to be until you stop trying to be the preacher you will never be. Because until I can be, I can be comfortable in my own skin. You know the beautiful thing about this text? It teaches me something. Pastor Roger Trotter, you can call me late and tell me if I, if I messed this all up. Um, but Pastor Roger Trotter, one of the things that this text is teaching us is I don't have to be like you. Roger Trotter is loud. And I love him. And he's a big old dude. Y'all ain't heard Roger Trotter preach. I'm telling you, y'all got to hear Roger Trotter preach. In fact, I'm going to bring Roger Trotter on one, one Friday and let him preach on my, on my, on my Facebook page. Here's the way I have to understand. Roger Trotter is a wonderful man of God. He's a wonderful. But you know what? Roger Trotter ain't like nobody else you've gone encounter. Ask anybody that know him. He's different. Because he's wonderfully made. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you to do something for me? It's just an exercise. You don't have to do it right now, but I'm going to ask you to go do it. Would you take a moment, just, just a few minutes before you go to bed tonight or before tomorrow ends, and I want you to take a piece of paper, and I want you to write down all the things that are about you that make you different. And I want you to, under, I want you to please underscore them, highlight them, because they're not your deficiencies. They are what God made you to set you apart. I close with this. I talked voice for a long time. Sonny, I know nobody knows that because I don't talk about it. But I talked voice for a long time. And here's what I learned. A lot of the singers, when they hear somebody like a Kim Burrell, or they hear somebody like a Karen Clark or whatever, uh, they hear Marvin Winers or whatever, they want to try to imitate these singers. And I understand that. It's, it's a fascination with greatness. I get it. But in the process, they lose their voice. Here's what, here's what the psalmist is saying. I praise you, God that you have made me with honor, Pastor Richard Butler, hey, man, and you have made me to be honored. Watch what he says. And not only am I made with honor and made to be honored, but Billy Bland, he says, you wonderfully made me. Mean this, I was crafted together in such a way that I'm not like anybody else. And so let me say to my brothers and sisters whose skin is dark like mine, Celebrate it. You're not like anybody else. Let me say to my white brothers and sisters whose skin is not like, whose skin color is not like mine. Same skin, different color. Same blood, different color. You're not like anybody else. Let me say to my brothers and sisters who are homosexual out there and people want to condemn you. Ah, listen, uh-uh. we're not tripping on that tonight. What we're saying to you is you are fearfully made with honor made to be honored, and you are wonderfully made, and that which is different about you is what sets you apart, and I'll get into it Sunday if I have time, and God will use your difference to, number one, connect with somebody, and number two, to bring glory to God. That's my whole lesson tonight. I'm done. But you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are made in honor, made to be honored, and we are made wonderfully, meaning we're made with a difference. That difference sets us apart. So black lives do matter. White lives do matter. Every black person ought to be proud that they're black. You ought to be proud. You ought to be proud. But every white person, you ought to be proud. Every Indian, you ought to be proud. Every Hispanic, you ought to be proud. Every Asian, you ought to be proud. Every African, you ought to be proud. And I can go on and on and on and on. You know why? Because the psalmist is right. We are fearfully made in honor, made to be honored, and wonderfully made, made to be different, made to be set apart. All right, y'all, I got to quit. That's my time. It's 8 o'clock. I got to get back to this paper. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Make sure that you join us on Sunday morning. Be sure that you join us on this Sunday morning. Be sure that you join us on this Sunday morning. As we go into the word of God together, I'm coming back to Psalm 139. I got a whole lot more that I want to say about it. I want to thank everybody for being with us. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Join us Tuesday for the prayer call. That's going to be this Tuesday at 12 noon. 
Uh, Pastor Gregory Bryant will be our special guest. Those preachers and pastors and Sunday school teachers, et cetera, that are out there, please go uh, out to Eventbrite or Cash App Me. It's $35 for the two-day event. I believe every pastor, every preacher can benefit from this. Pastors, if you have associate ministers, even if you don't believe you need it for yourself, enroll them. Encourage them to enroll. $35 for two days. I promise you, I'll change their life. I'll change their ministry in two days. That's the gift of God on my life. And so I want to encourage you, those of you who would like to share uh, with us, please go right now after my cash app and you can sow it to the ministry. I always like to give people an opportunity to do that. You can go to, go to, my, go to my cash app and it's right there on the screen right now. Uh, you can go to Rev Said, the R-E-V-S-E-D-D. Go to my cash app and you can sow whatever you feel like God is leading you to sow. I want you to know that we're praying for you. During this season, we're praying for you. Things are getting better. But I want each of us to walk in our uniqueness and know who God has made you to be, knowing I don't have to be like anybody else because I am wonderfully made and that sets me apart and who I am is to be honored. We're going before God. We're going to pray. I want to continue to pray for my students. We're praying for each and every one of y'all. I, I want you to know if you are a student at Jarvis Christian College, this pastor loves you and I'm praying for you all the time. I'm asking that God will bless our, bless our industries as they're opening back up, keep the numbers low and cause success to prevail. We're praying for our government. We're praying for our leaders. Let's go before God. Those who would like to, please go out right now and begin to sow your seed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for every pastor, every preacher, every member, every disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ that came on this broadcast tonight. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that each and every one of us, each and every one of us, oh God, will know you better, but come to know ourselves better because we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. We're made in honor. We're made to be honored. And the difference is not a deficiency, but it is that which you gave us to set us apart. And may we go forward to celebrate our differences and to celebrate our brothers and sisters' differences and to celebrate the giftings that God has put in the world. May we go forward and may we transform this world with the hands we, we you gave us, the feet you gave us, the mouths we, you gave us. We give you praise that you will be glorified and the world will be transformed by the people that you have fearfully and wonderfully made. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. One more time, Tuesday, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. Reverend Gregory Bryant will be on our prayer call. Uh, those who would like to enroll in our pre uh, coaching ministry for, for preachers, July the 14th and 15th, go out $35 or cash out to, it to me. Those who would like to sow, send it to me at, at Rev said, uh, dollar sign, I'm sorry, dollar sign, R-E-V-S-E-D-D. -D. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Be gracious unto you, and may the Lord grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see y'all on Sunday morning.